Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So till now we studied that how a missile can penetrate in a structure, right? And we studied basic phenomena. Uh, what uh, that how this missile penetration happens or projectile penetration happens and the basic physics of it and different kind of models that are available for the resistance force we also uh, studied and different types of materials for example rock soil concrete uh, how those material properties uh, play a crucial role in defining the depth of penetration. So all those concepts we studied. Now we are going to start a new topic, which is uh, shock wave propagation. Now, why this topic is important? Uh, uh, now I will describe that. For example, there is a missile or there is a projectile that penetrates inside uh, penetrates into the ground and you have an underground bunker right so at the time of impact at the time of penetration and suppose if that particular missile also explodes after the penetration then there will be shock waves that will generate and those shock waves will propagate through the ground media or the medium in which our structure is there and then it will apply some kind of load on the structure or on the bunker or maybe you can say underground shelter. Therefore it becomes very much important to study how shock waves propagate through a media and to study this topic Basically, we need to understand the basics of uh, wave propagation phenomena as such. In this topic, we will see, uh, because this is a, again, as I discussed in my previous uh, lecture, that penetration is in itself is a very vast topic and uh, has a lot of scope for research and uh, future development of technology. Similarly, shock wave propagation in itself is a very, very vast topic of research and you can spend a lot of time and maybe you can spend tens of years uh, of your career if you want to study this uh, shock wave propagation phenomena and a uh, lot of complications are there. And this is very interesting topic also. So let us start. So why study shock wave propagation? So I just explained. So maybe with the help of this figure, we will understand more. So for example, uh, let me. Uh, yeah. For example, say this is a uh, uh, some missile that is penetrating. Okay. So this missile is captured by this concrete overlay, or what I explained. Uh, burster slab right so uh, this has been uh, burster slab or something like that or some kind of you can say absorbent layer absorbent layer of protection so even if it explodes here it will propagate some waves which will reach to the structure and may cause damage to the surrounding structure or this uh, internal equipments of this particular structure. Similarly, in the second case, there is no uh, burster slab and missile penetrates at a greater depth. And then this can again lead to wave propagation, uh, shock propagation, which will cause some kind of vibration, some kind of dynamics of the system, which can lead to damage and we need to design our underground structures or bunkers for all these kinds of loads those are coming through the source of uh, shock wave propagation so and also suppose if one wave is propagating like this and it is hitting the water table or say rock layer 
so there will be kind of reflection also right so these reflections again will lead to some kind of damage to the structure so we have to also understand the direct propagation of the waves as well as reflected propagation of the waves so there will be some soft waves which will reflected from the deeper layer they will also reach to the structure so it is a very complex phenomena at, at the same time suppose if some wave is propagating through this media this is soil backfill okay so this is a geomaterial geomaterial are not conservative uh, 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 materials for example what i mean if you plot a stress strain curve of a geomaterial okay it will look something like this right so you see this is hysteresis loss or what you say the sum energy is getting attenuated due to this kind of uh, hysteresis in this stress strain curve and then there will be some permanent strain so it will not fully recover and that's why these materials also lead to attenuation of shock waves of shock waves so suppose wave is starting here with say pressure magnitude of p so when it will reach to the structure so it will propagate through this media and it will attenuate so suppose if it is reaching here so maybe only 10 percent uh, uh, is attenuated and it is reaching say 90 percent effect is coming for example i'm just taking a broad example so that is also a factor which can be used by the designers to to calculate the accurate loads on the structure so attenuation phenomena also makes the system uh, very complicated and the study of soft wave propagation very complicated so it is not an easy topic and it is very involved uh, area of research and uh, in this particular presentation we will try to understand the phenomena and maybe if you want to do future research on this topic so this will form a basis for you right and that's what is the objective of this uh, entire course to prepare you for your future research and uh, to enhance your basic understanding of the concepts which are uh, mostly used in uh, practices for blast engineers now so we are going to start with a very basic thing one dimensional wave propagation so all of you might have studied during some part of your undergraduate curriculum or maybe postgraduate curriculum uh, the phenomena of uh, one dimensional wave propagation so here you see we are considering this particular element the finite in finitesimal small element of uh, length delta x in this uh, one dimensional uh, system or you can say solid and uh, u represents the displacement of that particular uh, section and uh, if we write the equation of uh, uh, equilibrium so we can see the unbalanced force is very simple to calculate which is this a is the cross section area so this particular unbalanced force will help you in <coughs> writing the equation of dynamics uh, the equation of motion of this particular system so for example mass into acceleration equal to this unbalanced force which is a delta x uh, del square u del t square because mass is rho into a into delta x so this volume is delta x into a a is the cross section area and multiplied by delta x so it, it will give you differential volume multiplied by density this will give you mass of this particular uh, element multiplied by the acceleration so del square u by del t square is nothing but the acceleration of this uh, uh, element 
so mass into acceleration equal to unbalanced force which is this so once you equate this and it will lead you to this equation so this is simple one dimensional wave propagation equation now we are going to study uh, in more detail this fundamental one dimensional wave propagation equation this is 1d wave equation very popular we will study now this one in much more detail and we will understand uh, the implications of it so again stress equal to modulus of uh, young's modulus or modulus of elasticity into strain in x direction so when i am writing x x it means strain we are considering one dimensional phenomena x axis so strain in x direction and stress in x so in one dimensional we can very easily write this equation for uh, relating the stresses applied stresses with the strains right and then this is uh, again something very general which you might have studied in your mechanics of solids i'm not going to uh, go into much details of that because i'm assuming uh, that you have studied that strain is del u by del x and using this equation and this equation we can write stress equal to modulus of elasticity into strain so when we substitute this in this particular equation in one dimensional wave equation this will lead to this kind of equation which is rho into del square u by del t square equal to modulus of elasticity multiplied by del square u del x square so this is one dimensional wave equation which is also the partial differential equation which uh, you might have seen somewhere at least in your uh, previous pg or ug curriculum and the wave velocity uh, it is not clear so let me okay yeah so wave velocity is square root of e upon rho so this at least you might have seen somewhere that suppose if a wave is propagating through a media so the wave velocity can be very easily written as modulus of elasticity of that particular media divided by the density of that media in an average sense right so this wave velocity comes from this wave equation that that is the genesis or you can say the basis of uh, this formula of uh, uh, velocity of wave propagation through that particular media so why we are interested in the shock wave velocity you will come to know soon because if you remember i explained that there are various waves which are propagating through the media and they are reaching to the structure so while reaching to the structure they are passing through a media so when they are passing through the media they are getting attenuated and at the same time there may be multiple waves which are reaching to the structure so there will be some kind of phase lag or you can say the time lag between different waves so to calculate that time lag uh, we need to have the information of uh, wave propagation velocity and even in some cases you will see the wave propagation velocity can affect the attenuation process also so that's why we should have an idea how the wave uh, is reaching to the structure and in how much time so that's why we need to understand the wave propagation velocity now we are going to understand in much more detail this one dimensional wave propagation because we should study this one in much more detail so i'm going to start the discussion so our equation of uh, wave one dimensional wave is this this differential equation right so we can also write this one as u t t 
equal to c square u x x. So when we are writing u t t, so it means double derivative, double partial derivative with respect to time. And when we are writing u x x, it is double partial derivatives with respect to x. And c square is nothing but e upon rho. This means c equal to root, root e upon rho. So this c is your wave propagation velocity. Right. So I don't know whether uh, you have some exposure to partial uh, differential equations or not, but this is not a course on partial differential equation so i will not go into the much details but i will give you an overall idea uh, how do we solve this kind of partial differential equations so solution of this pd is uh, so can someone tell me uh, does if someone has already studied partial differential equations what can be the general solution of this kind of equation any idea if not then i can tell so at least tell me that uh, uh, that you don't have previous idea anyone maipal are you there maipal kala Then I'm not able to recollect. Okay, no problem, no problem, no need to worry. Yati, I just want to know who is there, who is not there, because keeping this. So who? Only eight people are there. Abhishek, Anurag, Deepak, Kala. Okay, so my pal is not there. Anyways, Armanul, any idea? So, uh, in your uh, MTech program, did you do any course on uh, uh, engineering mathematics, something like that? Numerical method, sir. Uh, okay. So, in numerical method, method uh, did they teach PDs, partial differential equations? Yes, sir. They okay. Forward, but, uh, I forgot. Okay, no problem. So, a generalized solution for the, this kind of partial differential equation, you can write f c zero t minus x plus f c 0 t plus x so basically f and capital small f and capital f they are arbitrary functions and they depend upon the initial conditions so the idea is when we solve the differential equations partial differential equations the solution comes in the form of functions of the variables involved so that's why this is a generalized solution of this partial differential equation and uh, maybe I will not go in a straightforward way and uh, you can try to prove it yourself by inputting this function in this particular equation and seeing yourself that this will lead to ultimately this will this solution will satisfy this equation. So I will suggest just take two minutes uh, and uh, try to see yourself whether this particular solution is satisfying this one or not. Can you try? So you have to calculate del square u del t square. Then you have to calculate del square u del x square and then input in this equation and then see this c0 is nothing but this c0 so here you can write like this c0 is this wave prop propagation velocity try it yourself only then you will uh, you would be able to appreciate otherwise uh,
so maybe you can try later also and uh, i am moving forward so basically in this wave equation there are two fundamental assumptions when we are deriving this differential equation and uh, this uh, wave equation so there are two fundamental uh, assumptions the first assumption is that you have already seen it so many times in mechanics of solids that plane section remains plane the age old assumption of all the things second important assumption is that stress is uniformly distributed over the cross section so suppose if we say that plane section does not remain plane or stress is not uniformly distributed then this wave equation that we have derived here will not be valid and the new equation that we will develop by removing these assumptions will be super complicated and it will involve other parameters also so that we are not going into and maybe this you can use in your future research and you can have an understanding that these two fundamental assumptions are inherent in this particular uh, in this part in the derivation of this particular equation may yes yes hello yeah so uh, because i was talking here about uh, partial differential equations so let me also quickly introduce that sorry so suppose we plot the solutions on t x plane right x is your uh, x axis displacement and t is time because the solution of partial differential equation is u x t right so suppose we take solutions uh, along these lines so suppose the equation of this line is c not t minus x equal to constant if you remember the solution of our partial differential equation was u x t equal to f c 0 t minus x plus capital f c 0 t plus x so now c 0 t minus x equal to constant will be this line and c 0 t plus x equal to constant some constant will be this line right so these lines these lines so there can be several such lines depending upon the value of the constant and these lines are basically known as the characteristics of this partial differential equation characteristics of pde no need to worry about this term characteristics and the solution because uh, this is part of a course on full fledged course on the partial differential equation and uh, we are not supposed to study that particular thing in this course but i am just telling you for the sake of completeness because here the discussion came so just you should have an idea that these kind of things are existing and are there so if someone is saying what is the characteristics of pd so maybe at least you can tell for this particular case the characteristics can be written like that and method of characteristics is a popular approach while solving the partial differential equations so again wave velocity 
So can someone tell what is the wave velocity? Root of P zero. Yes, C zero. Very good. Who was this? Kala. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. So C zero is the wave velocity. Very simple uh, answer and simple question. So what was this? How did we calculate this? Root e by e by rho. Yes. So this was the wave velocity. Now my question is: Can someone tell me what is del u by del t? What was u? So we took this element, right? Infinitesimal element. The displacement of this element was u. which is the function of x and time so if we differentiate this u with respect to time so u is basically displacement t is time so this will have the units of velocity so what is this velocity and here we already have wave velocity and this is another thing that is coming now in the picture can someone tell what is this velocity and what is uh, this is the wave velocity right till now we have discussed about the wave velocity that was coming here the strain rate then pardon strain rate no strain rate c i have already written this is this has unit u of units of velocity so it means it is a kind of velocity so Soft. first Pardon? The shock velocity. Shock velocity already we have shock velocity not wave velocity we have already defined, right? Velocity of deformation. Yeah, you you are coming very close. You are coming very close. You are coming very close. Who? Yes. Velocity of. I'm I'm not getting your voice is not clear. Can someone tell what he is saying? Velocity of you are coming very close. So basically, this is velocity of you can say this element, or you can say the velocity of particle. If this element is very small, it will be particle. So this is particle velocity. so there are two different things wave velocity and particle velocity wave velocity is the velocity of the deformation of the velocity of you should say rather the wave that is propagating through the media and particle velocity is the velocity of individual particles not the disturbance so this is the velocity of propagation of disturbance in the media and this is the velocity of individual particles right because here you are differentiating with respect to t this is part mind it this is partial differential right so at each x this will change this will change depending upon the location of the particle but this wave velocity this does not depend upon anything else in this particular case this is constant and depends upon only the entire media property and this will depend upon the location of the particle because this is partial differential with respect to t and at each x this may be different right so there are there are two types of uh, velocities when we talk about the wave propagation and we will understand now what is the relation between these two i know it is little uh, what should i say uh, difficult to grasp the idea of these two velocities the wave velocity and uh, particle velocity so maybe uh, you can do uh, what should i say a thought experiment 
so suppose uh, you can also uh, try to see yourself through some literature or some youtube videos that what is the difference uh, these two types of velocities how do they look for example maybe i can tell you quickly suppose if some wave is propagating or moving in the system like this right so it will have a wave velocity this wave and this wave is moving through these small small particles at different locations so for example one particle is here one particle is here one particle is here one particle is here so this disturbance is moving through this media of particles but each particle is vibrating at its own location right so the individual particle vibration is belonging to this velocity of particles and this disturbance that is propagating th through this media is basically the wave velocity so uh, what i will suggest that you have to think more yourself spend some time in understanding this maybe you can recapitulate your uh, uh, basic uh, wave propagation uh, ideas from your uh, uh, previous uh, uh, ug and uh, pg curriculum this will give you more insight about these two different types of velocities now we are going to check how the particle velocity is related to wave velocity this is the first question and that we uh, that we are planning to answer now but one more thing before going to this first question i will have some more uh, uh, some two small questions first question is why need to know wave velocity c0 root e by root why do we need to know so this i have already explained that when some wave is propagating through the media it is reaching to the structure it is taking some time so there may be some time lag if we uh, maybe and then then there will be some attenuation also so all those factors will have the effect of this wave velocity and that's why we need to uh, know about the wave velocity so that was the importance of knowing this wave velocity and sometimes also uh, if you remember from uh, uh, somewhere that different media have different kind of wave velocities based on that wave velocity we can identify the structure of that particular media so wave velocity is, is also is important in those cases but second thing is why we need to know about particle velocity so this answer we know that why we need to know the wave velocity but why we need to know about the particle velocity this question we will answer after answering this question that how particle velocity is related to the wave velocity so this is very this is going to be a very interesting exercise so let us start so i will suggest that you please uh, start solving along with me uh, bring your paper pen out and uh, then we are going to study this uh, we are going to solve it together so let us try with wave traveling in minus x direction so let me clarify here what i wanted to say so maybe probably i will go to the previous slide so here when we were writing that c0 t plus x equal to constant and c0 t minus x constant 
So these are representing these two functions, right? C0 t minus x plus C0 t plus x. So these are basically combination of two different waves, which are moving in two different directions. So how do we get the uh, direction? So suppose C0 t. So again, let us go to the, uh, the screen slide. C0 t plus x equal to constant. Now we want to know the direction. So we will differentiate this, this particular equation with time. Differentiate with respect to time. What we get? C0 plus del x by del t equal to 0. What we got? del x by del t equal to minus c0. It means minus c0 means this particular wave which was defined by this is moving in minus x direction. And when we talk about c0 t minus x equal to constant. So let us differentiate this with respect to time. We have C0 minus del x by del t equal to 0, which gives del x by del t equal to C0. So here you see there is a plus sign. So it means this represents the wave. traveling in plus x. Direction. Now let me give you more physical insight of this mathematical jargon. So suppose there is this one particular type of wave. This is x direction, right? And wave is moving like this in the plus x direction. Say with velocity c0, right? So this is the wave moving in the positive direction. So this we defined already with f, sorry. Mm, and we already uh, defined with capital F, if you remember, in C0 t minus x. Okay. And there was second function. Suppose second wave is like this. Okay, this is another arbitrary function, second wave you can say, which is moving in minus x direction with velocity equal to minus c0 in the minus x direction. This we defined with f equal to c0 t plus x. So our equation partial differential equation that we solved, it is the combination of f c0 t plus x plus capital F c0 t minus x. So this is what just uh, what you say, this is a generalized solution. This is a generalized solution of this partial differential equation of the wave of this one dimensional wave equation. So for this one dimensional wave equation, this represents the generalized solution. Generalized solution is for all the kinds of situation. That's why 
it is giving a solution in which we can combine different different functions or you can say different different waves in moving different directions but when we talk about the case specific solutions then we can take some special part of this particular wave equation for example if we want to consider only wave traveling in minus x direction then we can write the solution as in particular some in particular case in our case we can simply write as suppose uh, through some physical understanding or say let us through some kind of uh, intuition we have idea that in our case there will be only one wave which will travel in minus x direction that is quite possible in that case we can very simply write this equation uh, by considering only part of the wave which is traveling in the minus x direction so which part of this particular solution is moving in the minus x direction tushar yes sir which part of this wave equation is moving in the minus x direction so this one the f of c not t minus x plus x sorry very good very good it means you are able to understand good so this part is moving towards the minus x direction yes that's why in our specific case for example uh, let for being a simple simplified case let us assume that we already know that our wave is traveling in minus x direction then we can write this one now suppose if you know that our wave is traveling in plus x direction what will be the solution for our case can someone tell abhi yes. yeah f f of f of f of c not t minus x t my very good excellent so when our wave is traveling in x direction we can write and suppose we don't know we don't know uh, suppose our system is very complicated and we are not able to understand and uh, we want to write a solution for that so what solution you would like to write combination of both very good very good. who told this arman arman very good you are excellent person now tell me the full solution what what we will write f of c not t plus x very good then plus, plus f of c not t minus x very good so in complicated conditions we can write this generalized solution after that what will happen there will be some boundary conditions there will be some initial conditions based on those boundary conditions initial conditions or maybe some other information we can come up with more detailed information about f capital f and their nature and then we can write our solution for wave propagation right by getting that information to the picture maybe it is possible that if our system is very simple and we suppose if our system is very simple and wave is moving only in minus x direction then this will be equal to now let me let me know who can tell this akshay if our we know that our wave is going to after all studying this boundary condition initial condition we know that our wave is going to move only in the minus x direction then what will be this value zero 
very good this value will be zero because this part will go so that's how we can find small f and capital f based on our boundary condition initial condition and any other information that we can have about the physical phenomena so now we are coming back to our original question what was our original question to shah uh, deepak what was our original question we were going to answer deepak deepak hai bhi ke nahi hai अनुराग वॉट वॉज अवर ओरिजिनल क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम वेयर दिस जर्नी स्टार्टेड आई एम नॉट एबल टू हियर यू अनुराग क्लियरली कैन हेलो सर हाँ आप सही आ रहा है बताइए प्लीज हाउ पार्टिकल वेरी गुड एक्सिलेंट यू गाइज आर वेरी ब्रिलियंट आई आई थॉट आई थॉट दिस लेक्चर इज हैवी बट आई एम वेरी हैप्पी दट हाउ Ah, tell me how particle velocity is related to wave velocity. Is related to particle velocity. So that thing we were going to study, and then the discussion of this partial differential equation, the particular solutions, and uh, these things popped up, and we kept on discussing that. So now. let us assume that we have a simple case and our wave is traveling in minus x direction theek okay. hai so for that our u x comma t we can write again now what is that c0 t plus x because of, we are assuming that our wave is moving in minus x direction now we will try to step by step we will see that how we can reach to particle velocity we know that particle velocity is defined by del u by del t and wave velocity is defined by now this is something the only smart persons can answer this question now because i have already told c not e by u on the material exactly this is correct but there is one more smart answer to this you have already done in the previous slide if you were focused how the c0 came that t is equal to 0 uh that is okay but when i was explaining the characteristics you remember डी वेव so how we will what we will do we need to compute anyone do you by do t very good so now please calculate and tell what is del u by del t simple differential very simple can anyone tell what is del u by del t c not f c not t plus uh 
del u by del c, t by c not c not do f by do t do left by dt do t c not plus del x by del t ah uh, c not by plus del x by del t plus del x by del t are you sure there will be plus into 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 del f by f by del of t del of t okay let us see can we write like this Yes, sir. Can we write like this? So yes, suppose, suppose you want to do del u by del x. So del by del x of f of c zero t plus x. So first we have to differentiate del f with respect to. Suppose we write c zero t plus x as say we want to write it as y so can we write this like del y into del y by del x is it clear yes sir is this clear right so suppose if we define this one del f by del y f prime because we are differentiating with respect to the input of this and then multiply by del y by del x so what is del y by del x 1 1 exactly so that's how we can define our del u by del x and in the same way we can also define our del u by del t so now we will follow the same process and we will see how we can write this del u by del t right you just try yourself and uh, then we can see whether your answer was okay or not so sorry uh, del u by del t we can write like del u by the in the same way del by del t of f of c0 t plus x equal to so we assume this one as y so what we write del f by del y del y by del t so del f by del y will be same in both the cases so we can write f prime into dy by dt is nothing but c0 c0 f prime so here we have del u by dt equal to c c0 f prime and del u by del x is nothing but f prime now now just look at these equations carefully very carefully and after that tell me how we can relate wave velocity you have here c0 wave velocity and your particle velocity that you have here can someone suggest directly proportional to wave velocity is directly proportional to particle velocity wave velocity is directly proportional to particle velocity i completely agree with you i completely agree with you but in a mathematical sense can you give me an uh, equation 
by looking into all those expressions. Del u by del t is equal to c not del u by del x. Excellent. ये कौन था भाई? Who was this? Who told this? Arman. Very good. ये होना चाहिए confidence. This was wonderful confidence. So here we have wave velocity, and here we have particle. velocity so that's how we have correlated particle velocity with wave velocity and then we have this additional term that is coming into the picture del u by del x but but this term at this moment you cannot have some very clear physical idea about this one so we will play with this term del u by del x and we will try to see how we can correlate uh, this with, but can anyone tell what is this giving you uh, what is the physical meaning of this particular term just recall your strain yeah strain very good strain in x direction very good excellent excellent so as if you remember in my previous slide we can relate strain like this so we can again write like del u by del x so del u by del x can be written as as simple as that now with the help of this if we substitute in this one we reach Here, del u by del t equal to c zero sigma x x upon e. In a more compact way, if you want to write, we can write this as u dot that particle velocity c zero upon e sigma x x. now this we can further simplify by using c equal to c not equal to anyone root under e by rho root e by rho root e by rho substitute this one here in this equation and tell me the final expression for u dot sigma x by root of e rho by root of e rho uh root of e rho e rho yes sir. rho e yeah that i agree we can also write uh, most popularly it is written as rho into c0 because why because we want to bring the term of wave velocity but what you are telling in that there is no term for the wave velocity so because here our target is to relate the two types of velocities that's why we we want to write it in this particular format so this equation that we have here that is u dot equal to sigma x x upon rho c0 is nothing but very clearly we can see that particle velocity is equal to stress by medium density multiplied by wave velocity so that's how we can relate particle velocity and the wave velocity this is very important equation although it is based on very simplified one dimensional wave propagation and with two more assumptions what were those assumptions can someone tell 
there are two more assumptions hidden in this particular equation plane remains plane plane section remains plane it means you are listening very carefully second second stress is uniformly distributed uniformly distributed stress over cross section very good so uh, just a moment huh? oh it's already 12 o'clock you guys did not stop me anyways so uh, we will continue our discussion i thought uh, there is still time but uh, nobody stopped me so okay so we are going to stop here we will continue just a moment what happened keep huh? so we will our uh, we will continue our discussion later on so maybe quickly those uh, who want to um, uh, appear for the viva uh, they can okay so armanul is there who else is there so uh, uh, who else is who else is interested in joining for viva so they stay here rest of you can uh, uh, leave no problem okay so i am going to stop presenting i am going to stop recording